You unlock these crates by playing the game. Inside them are spoils dictated by chance. Enlisted gear, professional reinforcements, elite weapons. Or is there more to it than indiscriminate luck and serendipity? Perhaps there's more than meets the eye with supply drop. Okay, stop, that's enough of you. Excuse me, I'm doing my thing here. Nope, you're done. You can go back to the 60s. Okay, thanks. Yep, bye. Hey guys, it's Sour, and today I wanted to start a discussion around supply drops. This video is something I hinted at making in the previous supply drop opening, the fourth video I believe, so I wanted to do two pretty cool things in this video. First of all, I'm going to go through all of the percentages of everything you can get in supply drops. Now before you say, those percentages have been public knowledge for over a month, why make a video covering that now? Well concerned viewer, I'll briefly touch on the data that everyone's already heard of by now from the Advanced Warfare blog, but I have some more reliable stats of my own, from my own own supply drop videos. I have this spreadsheet that I'll be going through and comparing it to the information that most people believe at the moment because my data does confirm and contradict their data in different ways. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that I wanted to have some fun covering some supply drop theories that are floating around out there. Are there ways to influence how fast you can earn supply drops other than just gameplay time? Are there ways to influence what type of weapons you get in supply drops? Are there ways to increase the percentage of elite drops? So I'll discuss the validity of some of those because some theories are complete BS while others do have some decent evidence behind them. So first up, stat comparison. Here's what we have from the Advanced Warfare blog. This is what I've seen everyone say in their videos, and this is what most people believe. So they give these stats. Enlisted 55, Professional 30, Elite 15. You'll get weapons 35% of the time, Reinforcements 20, and Apparel 45. You've probably heard those before, and these numbers make sense, right? They're pretty easy to believe. They look like logical numbers that a human would code into the game. But keep in mind, this of course isn't taken from the code. This is simply data collected from a sample size of around quote 110 supply drops not a bad sample size but not great either later down here we have another stat what are the chances of getting one two or three items in each drop and apparently 15 percent of the time you get one 34 percent of the time you get two and 51 percent of the time you get three i don't know why they didn't round these to 35 percent and 50 percent it seems like they did that with all the other stats they have but oh well finally with those percentages they calculated the average number of items per one drop and that is 2.21 items so you You've probably heard this stuff before. Now let's move on to the new stuff, my spreadsheet. So I said this was more accurate data in some ways, and I will explain why I think that. And it's because this spreadsheet is currently based off a sample size of 200 supply drops, so that is almost double their sample size. But I will admit, even 200 isn't the greatest of sample sizes, so I will be continuing to update this spreadsheet as I make more supply drop opening videos. If you don't know how Google Docs work, I can update this document and the changes will appear for you live. So you can bookmark this video or this spreadsheet if you want to see it evolve over time. There is a link to this spreadsheet in the description. Description. Right now I've left it open to go up to 10 episodes, that would be 500 supply drops. That doesn't mean I can't make more than 10 supply drop opening videos. If people are still enjoying them, I'll keep making them, and it won't be hard to extend the spreadsheet. And that's another thing that kind of makes this more reliable info. These videos are publicly documented. If you have tons of spare time, you could watch these videos through and count up the drops like I did, although I don't recommend it. It took many hours to add this stuff up. Uh, I'd get kind of zoned out and then realize that I'm not sure if I counted the drop yet and I don't want to double count it so I just go back or delete it all and start again. It was quite frustrating at times, but I'm pretty confident now I have all this information right, it all adds up. So all this loot is shown in public videos, and that's not true with the Advanced Warfare blog. Not that I'm accusing them of falsifying stuff. I'm sure they ran some solid testing, but you just can't beat the public video evidence like with this. All right, now let's dive in. I started with the rarity stuff. I don't need to read out all these numbers. You can read them if you like, but I'll skip to my final percentages, and these are pretty on point with the expected percentage. Obviously, it should vary a bit because that's how probability works. So you can see my numbers are pretty similar to theirs. It only varies by a couple percent, which is reassuring to see. What's interesting Thing, though is that if I go back to the first version of this spreadsheet after only a sample size of 50 the first video obviously the results are different I actually had more enlisted stuff than expected and much fewer professional items and when we compare this to the spreadsheet with four times the sample size we can see how it's changed which of course demonstrates the importance of a large sample size with supply drops you can get lucky and unlucky and in theory if you get lucky and unlucky more and more again and again these average percentages will more or less settle on a number just like a graph that approaches an asymptote something that it will forever approach but never reaches so that average 
average is what we're looking for, and comparing these two spreadsheets, it seems like after the first set of 50, this number went down, passing 55, and perhaps suggesting that it's actually approaching 50%, not 55. Same thing with professional, it looks like after 26, which was an oddity, it gradually began approaching 30. And our elites have gradually gone up towards 20, not 15 over time. So if I had to predict human-like rounded numbers, that might actually be what I predict, 50, 30, 20. But again, this means very little. It's random after all. And above all, I'm excited to add to this document and see how the data changes over time. So to conclude that section, it's pretty close and you don't really need to know an exact number. It's not like that really helps you in any way. So this is perfectly good data. It's a good ballpark. Now on to the split between apparel, reinforcements, and items. I won't spend much time here. Again, it's fairly close. For apparel, we started around 40 and are trending upwards over time. So 45 is a great estimate. We started at 27% reinforcements, but we've been trending down, proving that the first 50 supply drops was indeed an oddity, 20 seems like a good guess here, and with weapons we started at 32-ish and have almost exactly matched 35. I imagine this number will kind of bounce back and forth around 35 and stay in this area as we open more and more supply drops if this is indeed a correct estimate. So again, pretty good matching data. This is where it gets interesting. When I counted up how many of my drops had one item, two items, and three items, this is what I got. 17, 43.5, and 39.5. Yeah, there is a huge disparity here between my data and theirs. That's an over 10% difference on the three item drops. So I guess seeing this large of a disparity kind of exposes that both of our sample sizes are not good enough. It's hard to explain why this is so different. You can see in the first set here, I was kind of lining up with what they had. I had more three drops than two and more two drops than one. Then in the next set, the two item supply drops went ham or something. In the third set, it was double the three item drops. Here's an interesting thing to consider. Is the drastic difference between the first set and the third set just a crazy roll of the dice? Or maybe they've been tweaking the supply drop odds over time through patches. And if that's the case, well, that really messes up everything we've been doing here, doesn't it? Anyway, moving on to the last stat. What's super mind-blowing is that their average items per drop was 2.21, which they calculated with their percentages and their items that they got. Well, I calculated this with my drastically different percentages, and you can see I just, you know, divide the total number of items I've found by the total number of supply drops I've opened, and guess what? Somehow, it is the exact same number at 2.21. Pretty crazy in my opinion. It's not 2.215, which is what it would be if I add just one more item. It's exactly 2.21. I just found that really funny. Anyway, that about does it for all of these stats. Again, I do look forward to adding to this and seeing it change. Well, I don't really look forward to adding to it. That's arduous work, but I do look forward to seeing it change. This stuff on the right here is just all the elite weapons I've ever found in this video. I figured I might as well document that for fun. It has little to do with these other stats, but people often ask, you know, do you have this or that elite thing? And well, here you are. These are the elite weapons I've found. If it's highlighted in orange, that means it's the first time I found it. Unlike the dang Ameli Whalehorn, 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 Whalehorn. And I've gotten this thing even more in the clips that will make up the fifth supply drop video. And this is actually a good segue into the second section of this video. We're moving away from statistics and into discussing theories. Is it really just a percentage chance? What are the chances of getting this many Ameli Whalehorns? Right off the bat, I'll make it clear I do not have any amazing secrets that will double your earning of supply drops or double the at which you find elites. That's just not a thing. If you see a video that's like how to get more elite supply drops, disregard it, ignore it. I'm not saying go dislike them, it's, that's kind of childish, but at least if you're watching it, be critical of what the person is saying. This is a good lesson for everything, really. If someone says you will earn a supply drop every game if you sing into your mic and swing a wombat above your head, or you can get more elites by not prestiging and staying at level 50, Ah, maybe you've heard that one. <laughs> well, don't just say, oh, thanks for the info, and believe it without question. Be critical. Ask questions. That voice on the video doesn't know everything, because a lot of the time, people just make these things up because they happen to get a couple good supply drops at level 50, and they decided to go make a video about it as if it's a fact. Anyway, same thing applies to me. I'm not exempt by any means. Be just as critical of the stuff I say, although I like to think I'm pretty good at differentiating when I'm giving factual advice and when I'm giving just an opinion or theory. So let's discuss some prominent theories. Well, first of all, 
earning supply drops. That's something basically everyone wants to know. How can you earn supply drops faster? Well, what makes the most sense is that it is simply time-based. You get them after a certain amount of playtime. 30 to 45 minutes is what most people like to believe. That being said, there is some evidence that points out other things being factors. Not the only cause, because obviously time is the biggest factor. That's just true. It would seem. <laughs> but at least being factors. Obviously, nobody can say for sure. But there are two things that seem the most credible, one being score per minute. It seems possible that score per minute could have some sort of multiplier effect on how fast you earn them. Many people report that lower score per minute equals faster supply drops, and while that isn't entirely unlikely, it's a hard thing to prove. Second is large marksman challenges and things of that sort. Many people attribute earning supply drops to completing significant challenges, and I don't have any evidence of this, but it's another decent theory. One thing that is not true is that you can earn supply drops through campaign and exo survival. That is not a thing. Yes, when you're upgrading your campaign exo and when you do certain things in exo survival, you do indeed get that pop-up saying you earned a supply drop but that does not actually mean you earned a supply drop. What that means is that you just earned either some of the campaign gear from campaign or the zombie gear from Exo Survival. So you're earning multiplayer gear, but not actual supply drops. Just something to keep in mind because I hear a lot of people saying that. So those are a couple theories pertaining to earning supply drops that I like. Marksman challenges and score per minute. Obviously, I don't have proof, but I'm interested to see what you guys think and what experience you have with either of those. The next thing people like to theorize about is how can you affect what you get in supply drops? I'll say up front, my rational mind does believe it is simply a percentage chance, like most people believe. But there's certainly a part of me that questions why I have tons of Ameli whale horns and tons of elite MK14 variants. But there are so many other elite things I have yet to see even once. There is just so much we don't know about supply drops. What if the game modes you play affect the loot you get in some small way? What if your play style or your school per minute or your stats affect what weapons you get in supply drops? Or maybe you're just predetermined to be more likely to get some things rather than others and that's just permanently tied to your account. Like how I'm forever doomed to get a melee whale horns constantly. That's something I'd be interested to hear. Let me know if you guys have any weapon or class of weapon that seems to constantly show up more than others because I get tons of ARs and LMGs but I have like one or two SMGs and I just find that strange. Let's put that theory to the test. So it's interesting to think about this stuff because again while it's more than likely that it's just a percentage chance some people say I'm really lucky that they're prestige 5 and they only have two elite guns. What? There, there's just no way that's a thing. Maybe they mean they only have two elite guns that are useful to them that they wanted to get. I don't know. Or maybe they just held on to three supply drops expecting to get a fourth for way too long. But two elite guns? That's insanity. Not the HBR 3 insanity. Elite. They probably don't have that because they have elite. two elite guns. Elite. Not that they proved it in any way. It was just a comment. So, yeah. Theories, mysteries, like I mentioned, people say I'm really lucky even though the stats earlier in this video suggest I'm fairly average. Well, I run around with every gun in the game in tons of different game modes going for marksman challenges and royalty camos. Maybe that has some effect on my loot. While that unlucky person, maybe they confine themselves to the BAL and the AK and only ever play TDM. Who knows? Uh, like I'll state for a third time, it's probably just percentage. The craziest thing that's ever happened to me though, is back when I was Prestige 1 or 2, the game had just dropped and we were going to try some uplink for the first time. So I put together an SMG class and knowing very little, I assumed mobility was movement speed, like you kinda would. So I used the MP11, which reports the highest mobility. Now I know that mobility variants affect ADS time, and the base weapon stat bars mean very little, but I was young and reckless back then. Anyway, I played a couple games with the MP11 and and when I opened my supply drops after those games, I got three or four different MP11 variants. And it really stuck in my mind because I had not gotten an MP11 variant up until that point. And when I stopped using the MP11 because it was bad, I have not gotten another one to this day. That just seems pretty crazy to just be luck. Although that theory of saying that using the weapon increases your chances of getting variants of that weapon, it just can't be replicated. Some people use the BAL or the Moors all the time and have yet to get a single variant for that weapon, so it's clearly not true to say that even though I did experience it. You'll notice I didn't run off to make a video spreading false information when I thought that might be a thing. Ah, uh, shots fired. Not at anyone specifically, just at people that propagate false information without classifying it as a theory.
Anyway, this has been quite the long video. I apologize if that's not your thing, but I think it's more efficient to make videos in this style. I guess if I wanted to make all of that YouTube money, I'd split up videos more. Not have 50 supply drop videos. Yeah, I'd have 10 supply drops per video, and I'd just call it huge supply drop opening. Aha, I'm onto something. <laughs> I just, of course, I prefer this format. It's what I would like to watch if I was the viewer. And if I was in this hobby for the YouTube money, I would have gone to work at McDonald's a long time ago. It's really about the fan interaction, the comments, feedback, etc. That's why I've enjoyed putting hard work into video production for over four years and still do enjoy it instead of going to work a minimum wage job. Anyway, let me stop rambling. I hope you guys enjoyed some part of this video. My next video will probably be more supply drop opening stuff to fill out that spreadsheet even more. And then I may move on to creating an advanced warfare science-y series that I'm pretty excited about, but we'll see. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you next time.